Sabbath. Why important? In the premiere video, we learned about the Sabbath in the beginning, or the Genesis. We learned about the creation of times and seasons. We defined the Sabbath. We learned who created it, when and how, and who it was created for and why. Now we're going to be taking the Sabbath right along and following it through the Exodus and see where it went from there. Rest stop number one, the Sabbath. We're going to learn in this segment about how the Sabbath was reintroduced after sin, how the Ten Commandments were introduced, and discuss the Fourth Commandment, where it's located in the Ten Commandments and why. We're going to learn how it is a memorial to creation, how it is a sign between God and his people, and how it was observed prior to Moses at Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb. I was told I was talking a little slow in the last one, so I'm going to try and speed it up a bit because we have much, much to cover. So let's get started. Reintroduced after sin. The Israelites' lives had changed significantly, and they were eventually enslaved to Egypt. That happened after the deaths of Jacob and Joseph, and also all his brothers, and all of that generation. Exodus 1.8 tells us there arose over Egypt a new king, one who did not know Joseph. Scholars believe that was Ramses II. So due to fear of the Israelites growing more and more numerous and mightier than them, the Egyptians made them slaves in Egypt. The Egyptians forced them into harsh slavery. They made them toil in harsh conditions in every form of slavery. That's found at Exodus 1, 13 and 14. Approximately 11 generations passed by. The Israelites were forced to work on the Sabbaths, just like other days. The Israelites were under hard bondage and slave labor for around 430 years, for several generations. They were not permitted to keep the Sabbath. They received little to no organized religious training in all that time and likely had no written record of God's instructions to the patriarchs before them. Also, orders were put in place to kill and eliminate all newborn sons of the Israelites. During this time, Moses was born and saved by the plans of his mother and sister, Miriam. Generations were approximated at an average of 35 years. Exodus 2, 24 and 25 tells us that in time, God heard the Israelites groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and God took notice. So he then intervenes to reclaim his people to worship him. And it's during this time that he called upon Moses to be his messenger to the Hebrews and the king of Egypt or Pharaoh. Afterward, God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh, the God of the Hebrews has communicated with us. Please, we want to make a three-day journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Jehovah our God. They wanted to Sabbath. The king of Egypt replied, Why is it, Moses and Aaron, that you are taking the people away from their work? Return to your labor. And Pharaoh continued, Look at how many people of the land there are and you would have them rest from their labor? That's taken from Exodus 5, 3 through 5. Notice rest in Hebrew is Shabbat. Strong's Exhaustive Concordance number 7673 tells us that Shabbat is rest and Shabbat is Sabbath. Pharaoh was obstinate 
and wasn't going to give them any time off work. That very same day, the Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters and their foremen to afflict the Israelites by increasing demands and forcing them to work even harder. From that point on, their lives were all about work, work, and more work. God executes his plan to let his people go, and the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt took place. The generation of Israelites that Moses led out of Egypt knew little, if anything, about the Sabbath. God reestablished and reintroduced the right knowledge of the Sabbath through a series of miracles. Two months after exiting Egypt and two weeks prior to arriving at Mount Sinai, the Israelites came to the wilderness of Sin, or Sinai. It is here God gives them instruction concerning the Sabbath. He reveals to them miraculously which day is the Sabbath and whether it makes any difference if we keep it. Miraculous food was provided from heaven. Manna. Manna was new. It was unusual. It was very different. They had never seen anything like it before. Manna means, what is it? Then said Jehovah unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Why? That I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Exodus 16.4 God's law is in full force and effect. God is testing them to see if they will obey one of its critical points. Notice what happens. Some try to save more over to the next day. It bred worms and stank. On the sixth day, they gather a double portion of manna, and Moses explains why. Tomorrow there will be a complete rest, a holy Sabbath to Jehovah. On the sixth day, then, they gather a supply of food for the Sabbath as well. Miraculously, it does not breed worms or decay, as on all the other days. It did not stink, nor were there maggots in it. By this sign, God identifies which day is his Sabbath. Then Moses said, Eat it today, because today is a Sabbath to Jehovah. Today you will not find it on the ground. You will pick it up for six days, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Some of the Israelites thought they knew better. However, some of the people did go out to pick it up on the seventh day, but they found none. Did it make a difference which day they worked? It made a difference to God. On the six other workdays, God rained down manna from heaven to provide food for his people, but not on his Sabbath, which is holy to him. On the seventh day, God rested from sending them manna. So Jehovah said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Take notice of the fact that Jehovah has given you the Sabbath. That is why he is giving you the bread for two days on the sixth day. Everyone must stay where he is. Nobody is to leave his locality on the seventh day. Exodus 16, 28 through 29. So the people observed the Sabbath on the seventh day. Verse 30. God revealed through miracles what day is his day, his Sabbath. The seventh day, manna fell for six days, double on the sixth day, but none on the seventh day. For nearly 40 years, God reminded them every week which day he had set apart. If they forgot, they didn't eat.
the codification of the Ten Commandments, or the Decalogue, as it's called by some, Deca meaning ten. Exodus 20, 1 through 11 is where we find this listed in most cases. Then God spoke all these words, I am Jehovah your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Number one, you must not have any gods besides me. Number two, you must not make for yourself any carved image or a form like anything that is in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. You must not bow down to them or be enticed to serve them. For I, Jehovah your God, am a God who requires exclusive devotion bringing punishment for the error of fathers upon sons, upon the third generation and upon the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loyal love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. Notice there, he refers to those who hate him as to those who do not keep his commandments because he says he shows loyal love to those who love him and keep his commandments. So he makes a correlation there between the two, love him or hate him. So if we wish to show we love him, we keep his commandments. Number three, you must not take up the name of Jehovah your God in a worthless way, for Jehovah will not leave unpunished the one who takes up his name in a worthless way. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it sacred or holy. You are to do all your work for six days, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Jehovah your God. You must not do any work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your slave man nor your slave girl nor your domestic animal nor your foreign resident who is inside your settlements. For in six days Jehovah made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and he began to rest on the seventh day. That is why Jehovah blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. Notice the seventh day equals or is the Sabbath day. Also notice God placed the fourth commandment right in the heart of the Decalogue. Number five, honor your father and your mother so that you may live a long time in the land that Jehovah your God is giving you. Notice the Apostle Paul stated in his letter to the Ephesians at 6, 2 through 3, Honor your father and your mother is the first command with a promise that it may go well with you and you may remain a long time on the earth. He reiterated this command and referenced that it had a promise attached to it. So this is a command that was given a positive reward as a result, and that's a promise. Number six. You must not murder. Number seven, you must not commit adultery. Number eight, you must not steal. Number nine, you must not testify falsely when you are a witness against your fellow man, or you must not lie. Number 10, you must not desire your fellow man's house. You must not desire your fellow man's wife nor his slave man, nor his slave girl, nor his bull, nor his donkey, nor anything that belongs to your fellow man. You must not covet things that do not belong to you. The Ten Commandments is also listed at Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 21. And Deuteronomy 10, 13 tells us that he gave us these commandments for our own good. The Ten Commandments were given by God personally 
Deuteronomy 4, 12 and 13 reads, And Jehovah began to speak to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words, but you saw no form. There was only voice. And he declared his covenant to you, which he commanded you to observe, the Ten Commandments. Afterward, he wrote them on two tablets of stone. Exodus 31, 18 reads, Now as soon as he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written on by God's finger. Notice this backdrop picture here. It's Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, landscape at sunrise. I thought would be a nice touch. The Ten Commandments are the only part of the Bible that was written by God's own hand and spoken by God's own mouth. This is significant. A note of interest found at Exodus 32:15 is that the tablets were inscribed on both sides. They were written on the front and the back. I did not know that previously. All laws hang or hinge on the Ten Commandments. They're connected. Commandments 1 through 4 are all about our relationship with our God, Jehovah, and putting him first. Matthew 22, 37 there reads, You must love Jehovah your God with your whole heart and with your whole soul and with your whole mind. Commandments 6 through 10 are all about our relationship with our fellow man and others. Matthew 22, 39 reads, you must love your neighbor as yourself. These scriptures in Matthew were Jesus talking while he was on earth. Notice that it's all about love. All these laws and the Ten Commandments are about love. And no wonder they originated with God, our Father in heaven. 1 John 4, 8 tells us there, God is love. Nothing further was added. These commandments Jehovah spoke to all your congregation in the mountain, out of the fire, the cloud, and the thick gloom with a loud voice. And he added nothing further. Then he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. This is Moses speaking at Deuteronomy 522. Important points to ponder. The Ten Commandments were commanded by the voice of the living God. They were written with his own finger. They were written in stone, engraved in stone, indicating durability and its imperishable nature. They were sacredly preserved inside the Ark of the Covenant. And most importantly, Scripture shows it's the only sign between God and his people by which we are to know him from false gods. The fourth commandment. Key points. First of all, it's the only one that God starts with the word remember. Can we be expected to remember something we've never been told? Can we remember something that we've never had any knowledge of? Hmm. The Sabbath command is the longest commandment out of the 10. The Sabbath was kept before sin. The fourth commandment points back to creation. The Sabbath is the only commandment made holy. The Sabbath is the only day that God set apart from the beginning to be holy. It identifies God as creator. It is the only part of the law that contains God's official seal of authority. Three essential elements of an official seal are all present. His name, his title and authority, and his domain. One more key point is that the Sabbath, the fourth commandment, is the only commandment that is not only 
a ceremonial law, but then also a moral law. It's both. The Sabbath is a memorial to creation. Memorial in the dictionary means something established to remind people of a person or an event. In this case, we have both. Exodus 28 says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Exodus 20:10, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In the fourth commandment, after God says, remember, he points to creation as the origin of this commandment. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Psalms 111.4 The seventh day Sabbath is a weekly memorial day of creation to remember God's power and love and that God is worthy of our worship because he is our creator and created us. Revelation 4.11 reads, You are worthy, Jehovah our God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power because you created all things and because of your will they came into existence and were created. God was the first example of observing the seventh day Sabbath at creation following his work in the first six days. Ephesians 5 1 tells us, be imitators of God like dear children. We should imitate our father and follow his example. God rested, he ceased. Then he made the seventh day holy or set apart. He set it apart for man to observe. God knew that we would need a day set aside from our hard work in which to rest, worship him, and regain spiritual strength, physical strength, all different types of strength, even mental strength. The Sabbath was created to be a blessing and a joy to man. The Sabbath was created for man. Jesus said at Mark 2:27, the Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath is a sign between God and his people. Exodus 31:17 says, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel or God's people forever. For in six days, Jehovah made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. It is an enduring sign. It is a permanent sign. Exodus 31, 13 reads, God's covenant not only says that you may know that I am Jehovah, but it also says that you may know that I, Jehovah, am sanctifying you. Sanctify means set aside for holy use or purpose. God sanctifies those who are his people. He sets them apart from other people as his, for his holy purpose. The Sabbath identifies both who God is and who God's people are. Continuing, a sign between God and his people. Here are a couple more Old Testament texts. Ezekiel 20, 12. And I gave them my Sabbath days of rest as a sign between them and me. It was to remind them that I am the Lord who had set them apart to be holy. Ezekiel 20, 20 reads, keep my Sabbath days holy for they are a sign to remind you that I am the Lord, your God. Sign here actually means a visible communication, a meaning, evidence, or proof. 
in identification. The Sabbath is important to God. His people are expected to observe even in the most rushed or hurried times. Exodus 34:21 says, even in plowing time and in harvest, you will rest. Sabbath is top priority. God threatened punishment for not hallowing the Sabbath. Jeremiah 17, 19 through 27. Keep the Sabbath day sacred, holy. If you do not obey me by keeping the Sabbath day sacred, I will set her, Jerusalem's gates on fire. It will consume, it will not be extinguished. God destroyed the Israelites in the wilderness because they profaned the Sabbath. That's found in Ezekiel. Priests profaned the Sabbath and were consumed with fire. That's in Ezekiel as well. The nobles of Judah brought more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. That's found there in Nehemiah. God pronounced a special blessing to all men who keep the Sabbath. Notice all men. Isaiah 56, 2. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath. This included also the Gentiles. Isaiah 56, 6 through 7. Also, the foreigners that join themselves to Jehovah to minister unto him and to love the name of Jehovah and to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from profaning it, even those I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. God also requires us to call it honorable. We need to view it that way. Isaiah 58, 13 says, If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight in the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways or seeking your own pleasure or talking idly. This yoke that he gives us is easy. This load is light. First John 5, 3 reads, His commandments are not grievous. They're not burdensome, not difficult, not irksome, not heavy. The Ten Commandments were observed prior to Moses at Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments, God's law, was known to people and in effect long before Moses was ever born. God wasn't giving Moses a brand new law at Mount Sinai. God made a significant statement about Abraham recorded at Genesis 26, 5. Abraham listened to my voice and continue to keep my requirements, my commands, my statutes, and my laws. Abraham was born hundreds of years prior to Moses, and to keep God's requirements, commands, statutes, and laws, Abraham had to know what they were. Prior to the codification of his law, his people learned orally from him, directly, and through others, especially family. This formal version, this codification of the law, and also the Mosaic law, would be needed to govern the emerging nation of Israel. Did the Ten Commandments really exist before Moses? The Bible refers to sin many times before Moses. Six examples listed here um, are in Genesis. The Bible very simply defines sin as sin is the transgression of the law. That's 1 John 3, 4. 
If sin is defined as transgressing or breaking law, then law has to exist prior to the sin. The Apostle Paul wrote at Romans 4.15, Where there is no law, neither is there any transgression. Law cannot be transgressed without law existing to transgress. All individuals who are described as sinning in the book of Genesis broke the law hundreds of years before it was later codified on Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments were known and understood long before Moses was born. The Sabbath identifies both who God is and who God's people are. Mark 2.27 The Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath was observed and clarified by Jesus. Continuing on this topic, next up we will find Rest Stop Number 2, The Sabbath. In this segment, we are going to learn about Jesus' example here on the earth, his apostles' example after he was resurrected, and how the Sabbath was desecrated in 321 AD. Thank you for watching.